At noon, a Lancaster County man has been sentenced up to 40 years in prison for sexual abuse of a preteen girl. Hey, nudists. It's me again, Nick Bate. Nicklaus Stoutzenberger was convicted of three charges, including a first degree felony count of involuntary deviant sexual intercourse with a child. Uh, here's some baby oil that I use as a lube for jacking off with. As part of his sentence, Stoutzenberger must register under Megan's law with police for the remainder of his life. As I go down my list of strange, wacky, abusive, or even just plain disgusting people, I realize that one person in particular kind of, uh, I've been procrastinating. I don't want to, I didn't want to cover this due to the uh, heinous and sensitive nature of the story. This is probably going to be the most disgusting person I cover on my channel. Unless I want to get into like some criminal shit, like the actual criminal so stuff, like, you know, you know, people that are serial rapists or serial killers, like, this guy is probably going to be the worst person that I ever talk about. Like, you thought Pamper Chew was bad? Uh, let me show you who this dude is. Like I said, this is a very sensitive and heinous story, uh, and for once, there is a happy ending. Well, as much of a happy ending as there can be in the situation. So why do I procrastinate if there is a happy ending? Happy endings often come with a price, um, and in this case of Nick Bates, it was a heavy price to pay for the victims and for him. Before we get into this, I want to put a warning here. It's going to get absolutely disgusting. Uh, this is the moment to hit that like button. Maybe go be a goat and watch some of my other documentaries. But things are about to get very disturbing, to say the least. This is Nicholas B. Stoutzenberger, arguably the most beautiful man on the planet, right? <laughs> I'm just hey, I'm yanking your chain. I, uh. He's the grossest human being to walk this earth, and you'll find out why in just a few moments here. Now, Nick Bates was born in Pennsylvania on September 1st of 1991. He lived with his two parents and his half-sister. His parents, they eventually got divorced, uh, according to his Aunt Joyce. Uh, we'll talk about her a little bit later. According to his Aunt Joyce, uh, the reason they're getting divorced was because his dad was abusive and somewhat of an alcoholic. Though... There is no evidence to actually prove this. It's also fair to note that Nick here also enjoyed dressing up as a woman. Uh, he liked to steal his mom's uh, panties and keep them in a drawer, as you'll see in a video later uh, called A Tour of My Room. Yeah, we'll get into that later, though. Things were quiet, so we skip ahead until about the fourth grade. Uh, this is where we start getting into... You know how smart he is. Skipping ahead to around the fourth grade in the Penn Manor School District, he was placed in an emotional support group, uh, you know, because he was so antisocial. Though he was very antisocial, he was, and I quote, smart and funny. Smart and funny. <laughs> if you take a look at his psychological evaluation that was done on him at the age of 21, it says that in high school, Nick was usually very quiet in class and at times cooperative. He works well in a one-to-one -one situation with staff and in small groups. Out of 52 possible points, he receives 48 to 52 um, daily, but loses the most points in the area of respect in class rules. He continues to exhibit difficulty with peer relationships, which is demonstrated by his inappropriate behaviors to peers. Until recently, Nick did not interact with others, on the playground, anywhere, and often chose to remain in the classroom during recess. He is unable to accept consequences for his inappropriate actions and repeatedly states, I didn't do anything. Nick is extremely emotional and takes everything to heart. One thing to take note of is the fact that he liked to talk like a Canadian. <laughs> I know this is just off the cuff here. Uh, I really didn't have any place to put this uh, other than like in the later sections of the video where we can actually get into stuff that he's written. Uh, but I had to put it here. This dude annoyed the fuck out of me because he talks like a goddamn Canadian. I'm not Canadian, but it's like hearing an American try to talk like a British person. It just... Canadians must love him, right? He usually replaces words like about with a boot or house like hoose. You know, you get it. 
you get it. It's also very infuriating for some reason. I believe that most Canadians that knew of him found it very offensive, especially because of how degenerate Nick is. Uh, also, due to there not being any more information to divulge about his school years after the fourth grade, it's speculated that due to hardships in his actions to fellow classmates, Nick was homeschooled by his mother from the seventh through tenth grades, returning to his high school as a junior. But apparently still drew unwanted attention to himself by sucking on his hair and moaning for no reason. Now, when you visit the Kiwi Farms, he actually got, uh, he got a lot of attention on there, as most lol cows do. And <laughs> he was getting compared to Chris Chan, but also said, the people on there said that he was worse than Chris Chan. But one of the comparisons that you can make from Chris Chan uh, to Nick is the fact that he liked to do these weird moans for no reason. Chris Chan, he did his little sighs and his moans out of like anxiety and stress. Uh, Nick did the same thing, except he would also do it randomly for absolutely no reason. So, there's the two comparisons that you, you people can make uh, to this guy. Yeah, Nick is, thir as of right now, Nick is 32 years old and has never had a job in his entire life. His belief in life goal was to become a house husband and raise a kid with an underage uh, child. <laughs> it gets... <sighs> Uh, hate saying it out loud. Oh yeah, we'll be covering it. We'll be covering that in a little while. All right. Well, <laughs> let's just keep keep that little tidbit in your mind uh, for the moment. Though he has never had a job, he has in fact worked with his mom at a flea market. So, I guess that's his one accomplishment in life, right? Nick did nothing with his life, and due to depression, received social security checks. After graduating high school, he did not get a job. Instead, old Aunt Joyce, you know, <laughs> Aunt Joyce, she's an OG enab enabler, right? God damn it. Like, you get people like Cyrax and, you know, his enabler of a grandmother, Sally, or mom, whatever, you know, Sally. Uh, she enables all his stuff. Chris Chan, uh, his mom is pretty much, like, just as bad as him because she, you know, though the things happened to her, you know, that Chris Chan did to her, she was still an enabler and pretty much allowed him to you know, free roam and do whatever the fuck you wanted. A lot of these, a lot of these law cows, that's generally how it goes. Like, they're just, they're very vile people due to the fact that their upbringing just didn't really give a shit. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, raise your kids right, people. Uh, anyways, Aunt Joyce, she's an OG enabler. She helped him apply for that old security, social security check. Uh, she also helped him get in touch with a case manager for his mental health and let him live in her apartment that she herself owned and allowed him to just, you know, live there free of charge, you know, no rent, no nothing, just got to live the goddamn life, right? Um, he was coddled. He was basically coddled by Aunt Joyce. It's peachy. That's <laughs> it's just peachy, isn't it? Uh, Nick isn't the smartest tool in the shed. Uh, in fact, one could say that He's about as sharp as a hammer. During his psych evaluation, he reportedly appeared distressed and said, Why would these people think I could live alone? And when asked the question of what Wooden would do if there was a fire on his stove, he answered, I would have to text my aunt, and maybe I could throw something on the fire, but I didn't think water should ever be thrown on a stove. And at the time, I never mentioned calling emergency services. He had no thought about it. You know, his intelligence was more on the smart side of the school aspect when it come to, like, common sense. The dude had none. While we're talking about his living situation, let's get into his room tour. Oh yeah, uh, he had a YouTube account. We'll we'll get into all that in a little while. I'll I'll list off all the stuff that he uh, he frequented. But editor, play the room tour, please. You're gonna love this one. Hey. Hey, okay. Is it recording? Yeah, it's recording. Hey, this is Nick Bate, and um, I'm gonna give you a video tour of my room, and uh, I'm trying to speed through this really quickly because like I've had to redo this video like a bunch of times cuz um I keep running out of time so okay let's go alright um okay not much light in here okay well this is my computer desk uh, I put my laptop on it and laptop accessories um right now I'm using it uh, well, my laptop doesn't really work right now, so now I'm just kind of stacking crap on top of it. There's my dresser. Some clothes go in it sometimes. Uh, there's my bed. There's a pillow that I hug when I'm sleeping. Because I literally need to hug something while I'm sleeping or I can't sleep. Um, there's my 
there's my nightstand where I put things that I want to have access to while I'm in bed, such as my TV remote, cell phone, iHome remote, and uh, drinks. And here's some panties. And okay, there's there's a TV. Um, there's the wall of Anna. Sometimes I put other things on it. Right now I have drawings of the Coffee Crew characters. Probably can't see it because it's uh, really not very much light in here. Um, there's my PS2 and PS2 accessories. Um, I don't know. I don't really use that stand thing. There's um, mostly cords that go to um, my uh, handheld devices, chargers and stuff. There's my cat. Uh, Nanny doesn't allow cats in the house, but I do it anyway. Um, there's my iHome. Um, then around the TV and iHome area, uh, I just, I put things that I use on a daily basis, such as my Dixie Cup, uh, DS, you know, DS games. Uh, there I'm starting a, con a collection of Mountain Dew cans, Monster cans, and McDonald's McCafe coffee cups. Um, Captain, would you... Oh, you dick. Uh, okay. Here's, here's my CDs. It's a thing of CDs. Mostly they might be giants. Also, there's video games at the bottom. Um, and here in the corner of my room is a stack of papers and, you know, stuff that I use occasionally. Um, but it's mostly just papers that, like, I write random things on and then never look at them again and then throw them in a pile. There's a keyboard that I hardly ever use. There's also a guitar that I hardly ever use. Um, there's, 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 uh, where I hang my shirts and stuff. Um, there's, there's my backpack. Um, let's take a look inside it. Um, I bring it to Dad's and I fill it full of stuff that I want to take with me to Dad's, such as my flash drives. You know, um, uh, 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 okay. Let's unzip. Okay, here's a, here's a binder. Um, it, uh, I have, like, my Coffee Crew comics and stuff in it. Captain, would you, Captain, get out here. And, um... There's more on the other side. Also, like, more random... Random drawings and scribblings and stuff. Um... Uh... Uh... Okay. Yeah, more Coffee Crew comics on this side. Okay. Uh, Cap! Captain, get the... Okay. Here's another... Another binder. This has Captain, get out of here. Get out of This has letters that Anna sent me in the mail and stuff. And then envelopes that they came in. Um Yeah. There's there's a Lincoln C D she sent me. Another letter over here. Yeah. Um uh mm, is that everything? I don't know if that's everything. Um, is that everything? There's a balcony door over there that, uh, leads to the balcony. <sighs> there's, there's some books that I don't read, because I don't read books. There's a crate full of stuff that I never use. Um, down there's a box of stuff that I never use. There's a broken TV. Um... There's, uh, there's a horse picture that, um, just randomly hanging on my wall. It's always been there. I don't really care. Uh. Ow. Uh, here's, here's a bathroom. There's a toilet. There's a plunger that I use as a butt plug. There's, uh, there's a mirror. This is usually where I take pictures of myself. 
There's um there's a sink. Uh there's uh here's some baby oil that I use as a lube for jacking off with. Uh or for putting things in my butt. Uh, what do you want, Captain? What do you want? There. Uh, I guess. Guess that's everything. Pretty much everything. So, uh, uh, yeah. At this point, uh, I would recommend that if you're very sensitive in nature to all of this that is about to come up, um, I would want you to jump ship now. You know, like I said, click like, go watch another documentary or something I made. Uh, you have been warned. I will give another warning because I've I've laid I've laid this documentary out in such a way that it just progressively gets worse. I consider there to be like three tiers of just vile stuff <laughs> you know so this is the second tier uh if you're not as sensitive keep going there will be another warning so as you can tell nick isn't the most intelligent uh he also isn't clean in fact he has an aversion or some kind of water uh nick is so fearful of getting clean that when he took a shower which was about once a week he would just wet his hair and sometimes let let the soap run down his body absolutely deplorable it was also found on his twitter that he has a fear of dentist um now, it was believed by old Nick here that uh, the dentist wanted to slit his throat. Uh, he believed that all the dentists wanted to kill him for some reason. Well, you know, <laughs> if I was Nick's dentist and I saw his teeth, I'd want to murder the little bastard too. Ugh. Jokes. You want to know what his teeth actually look like? Editor? Gorgeous. Gorgeous smile, right? There's a reason for that. As shown on his old Twitter post, uh, he has a fear of the dentist and for some reason believes that the dentists want to murder him. The accounts and replies have long been deleted and the archives didn't catch him, but uh, here are some quotes that I actually found on the farms. Speaking of clean, I guess it's time to talk about his, uh, you know, the things that he was into. Uh, since it is the time to get into his cleanliness uh, and his lifestyle and his, his apartment, um, he was into shit. Let that one sink in. Let that sink in. You done letting it sink in? Okay, let's continue. So Nick is a, a, a copophile, copophile, whatever it is where you're into shit. Uh, man, let's <laughs> let's get into it, man. So yes, Nick is a copophile, copophile, copophiliac. I don't know. I don't know these terms. All right, one that's aroused by feces. Okay. Ugh. He also has a distinct love for buttholes and buttholes only. Just buttholes. <laughs> like, he claims that uh, he hates vaginas and finds them utterly disgusting and uh, he did say and it is reported that oh, fuck I don't even want to say this out loud it's reported that he likes younger vaginas because they haven't grown up and gotten all gross and opened up and I'm done talking about this <laughs> Anyways, he loves buttholes, hates vaginas, and finds them utterly disgusting, which is kind of ironic, right? But I digress. One more thing to note while we're on the subject of cleanliness, his apartment and his his shit obsession. It was noted that his apartment smelled like ass, and it was probably because he liked to smear shit and... Mm-mm-mm. Other bodily fluids uh, <laughs> on the walls. And I'll let you know, oh, OG Aunt Joyce, the OG and a enabler, she didn't do anything about it. She would just walk in and be like, it smells like ass. And then she would just clean it up. While we're on the subject of uh, his sexual tendencies, it was quoted from Nick himself, I have frequent fantasies about having anal sex consensually and forcibly with females. And stated that his sexual fantasies often included young girls who can talk in full sentences and are house trained 
but not yet like real women. Oh my god. Editor, I wish... <laughs> I wish I had a clip of me just turning around, just puking into a fucking bucket, just old Eric Andre style. I really do. 360, we've added a DSP, and then we- <laughs> <laughs> Fucking gross, right? Well, it doesn't end there. Um, on top of all those fantasies, he's also claimed that he tried to get on the internet and search up CP. If you don't know what CP is, uh, it's, uh, it's right here. He was at. He was actually advised by the psych, psych evaluator uh, that those actions were illegal, and uh, he responded not knowing or understanding why it would be illegal. And that's correct. Uh, there are several instances of him claiming that you know PDFs, PDF files should not be. Um, illegal so there's that so since we're on this really terrible subject i guess we can start talking about the atrocities that he's committed usually getting into these documentaries i try to keep the timeline as straightforward uh streamlined as possible and you know try to make it as understanding as i can well this is where things get a little convoluted because due to future events uh we'll talk about them later they were happening about the same time as what i'm about to talk about so keep that in mind if i don't get the timeline correct just uh, tell me in the comments, you know, just bear with me here. So, back in 2009, Nick had written an intensive blog on a person named Anna. Now, this is where we're going to be getting into the forums and stuff that he actually frequented. Um, so, Nick, he liked to frequent these forums for these animated Flash shows that he liked. Well, one of them was called Homestar Runner, and the, only, oh, the other one was called, like, Bonus Stage. So, back in 2009, Nick had written an intensive blog on a person named Anna. Now... Nick had met Anna on the bonus stage forum uh, a few years back, I believe. Anna herself is kind of a weird person to begin with, and because of just how weird her tendencies were, Nick eventually borrowed many of her uh, quirks and you know stuff that she liked and her interests, and just pretty much made it about himself. Like he, he made he became Anna basically. Anna reportedly had Asperger's and enjoyed being a weeaboo and watching anime. Uh, what makes Anna kind of a strange case was her interest in finding neckbeards or basement dwelling discord mods. That's a joke, that's a joke by the way. She would find these discord mods on the Homestar Wiki and the aforementioned bonus stage forum and seemingly cyberfuck them. In which Nick was one of those people. Uh, Nick and Anna, they would do these cyberfuck sessions for hours throughout the day and... Uh, you know, that that's just... Everything in large numbers is a bad thing, right? Like, everything in moderation in this relationship wasn't any different. <laughs> Over time, Nick had started getting more and more degenerate with his talks. Um, probably, you know, we'll, we'll get into some of that, but... <laughs> <laughs> seemingly start making her worry and you know gross her out because she started to seize communication with him and in turn made him even more obsessed even going to the extent of like I said in the beginning creating a very obsessive blog called the legend of Anna now these blogs are pretty strange in themselves and of course as you can see in his Twitter his profile is a very Canadian accent heavy and it's just so fucking annoying <laughs> Look at, looking at the blog, it looks like his earliest post was November 20th of 2009, and it reads, So I decided to keep a separate blog specifically for Anna-related events. If you don't know who Anna is, then, uh, maybe you shouldn't even be here. I've explained the story millions of times, and I'm tired now. Well, here's the first entry. Apparently Caleb, which, <laughs> I don't know who the fuck Caleb is. Apparently Caleb sent Anna the following email. You're nothing without Nick, which I find to be very LOL. Without Nick, you're not interesting or appealing in any way. The majority of your online friends are only your friends because Nick's exploits towards you are hilarious. With his efforts, he's going to find love before you, and you'll be long lost memory. And God knows, not a very pleasant one. And once he's gone, the friends that are around to laugh with you at Nick will be gone. And you will be friendless in real life and offline too. P.S. Fat people are disgusting. P.P.S. Your thinning purple hair is disgusting. P.P.P.S. You're disgusting. You are literally only... You are literally only interesting when Nick is in the picture. You have absolutely no interesting hobbies or activities that you delve into. You have no social experiences, thus no stories to tell in a social situation or any way to relate to anyone else's social stories. Basically, Nick completes you. You are fully socially inept without this loser being a creep towards you. You are as bad as Nick. 
But you have a way to displace your terrible social skills and loneliness by laughing at Nick every time you feel like you have a short end of the stick socially. TLDR, purple pig, purple pig, purple pig. Obviously, I was pretty pissed. I then proceeded to yell at him for doing this. So then, as she usually does, Anna gets her friends to do her dirty work for her. Kate left a comment on Caleb's DeviantArt, which I forgot to mention that he had he he kept he keeps a live journal and a Deviant DeviantArt. He was one of those uh, people. He was one of those Deviant people. Uh, he then commented back. It went on for minutes upon minutes. I think the comments are probably hidden by owner now, so linking to them would be futile. Anyway. I joined in to say that Anna's not a purple pig, at which point both Caleb and Kate told me to get the fuck out. Later on, Kate and some other person Anna knows invited me to an MSN chat so they could once again tell me to leave Anna alone. By now, I've learned arguing over the internet is dumb and futile, but whatever. I presented my case to them anyway. Of course, because they're stubborn, they didn't listen anyway. Don't know why I even bothered. Then Anna reported me to DeviantArt for harassment. Explain to me how that works out. Wasn't I on her side? I've got to say that woman perplexes me sometimes. And just for a little bit of context about the destruction of Anna and Nick's relationship, here's a blog from December 19th, uh, 2009. So I'm reading over my 200 plus logs I saved for my conversations with Anna, and I've got to say... I was pretty annoying back then. In the late 2006, early 2007, I was constantly reminding her that she was supposed to call me. Eventually, she finally did, twice, and it seems like most of our conversations have at least one instance of me asking her to marry me or play the PS2 naked while I watched and jack off to it, or whatever, and her just saying, maybe, all mundane-like. She probably thought I was annoying too, but just didn't want to say it. Then I began wondering, how long did this go on? Was I still like this in August of 2008 when she blocked me? Could this have been the reason? Of course, I've changed now, but I assume that she still thinks I'm like that, but damn. How can I prove I've changed after being annoying for so long? Okay, so yeah, it was me. I completely forgot that account existed until I read the log of when we started doing it. I was gonna do another comment being like, is it Nick? Or am I really your cartoon crush giving you sound advice? Ooh. But apparently she blocked all this the BS account, so yeah. But seriously, Anna, Phil speaks the truth. I I'm a, not to sit here and, and break the immersion that you have you guys have, but um, I'm pretty sure these people that he's talking about, uh, Phil and say Caleb, I, I guess these are people that he's having talked to her t for him. I don't know. Seriously, Anna, Phil speaks the truth. I love you. Why won't you at least give me a chance? And I mean, damn, the, f the fact that we worked on that project together should give you a hint. We used to be such good friends, always doing fun little projects like that together. What happened to those days, huh? As a side note, does Anna actually read this blog? Because she probably should. I need a way to communicate things to her. Now, for the sake of time, we won't go through the others, because there's a fuck ton of them. Uh, but there is a very important one that we do have to read through. Uh, it was his last blog in the June of 2010, and boy is it a doozy. He basically tries to text Anna, and someone named Miles Edgeworth starts messaging him instead. <laughs> Apparently from Anna's phone, so here's a transcript of that Nate posted himself. This one's called the SMS Titanic. Finally, some new news. Okay, so basically it started yesterday when I decided to try sending Anna a text message. Here are the contents. Hey, Anna, it's me, Nick, Bait, or Stoutzenberger, whichever. But yeah, it's been a while. So I was wondering if you want to talk or whatever. I mean, not much has changed with me other than I started listening to new bands. J.O.J., Scarling, R.B.F., you know. Read the other two books you told me to, too. Loved them. Also been playing a lot of Pokemon and Final Fantasy VII. You should play the PC version, by the way. Painting my aunt's apartment for money, except, etc. Plus, I'm less annoying, so yeah, I'm curious as to how you've been doing. So, uh, I guess give me a holler. See ya. Wait, why, why did I say that when this is a text and not live? Okay, now I want you to notice something. There's absolutely nothing sexual or even romantic in it, right? The whole thing was all chillax. Like, hey, what's up, man? I did this on purpose, hoping maybe, like, it'd bring back memories of back when we were still friends. Well, anyway, a few minutes ago, this happened. The other person is Kate again. Uh, don't know who Kate is. Oh, I, I'm assuming he's trying to say Miles Edgeworth is Kate. Who knows? Let's read this. This is actually pretty, uh, this is 
This is actually a pretty fantastic transcript. Never, I repeat, never text Anna again, or I swear to God I will chop your balls off and feed them to you. Okay. Nick says, What? You heard me. Are you illiterate now? No. I'm Ill I'm literate, but why can't I text her? Weird fucking face that I hate. Because she doesn't want you to. It upsets her. If you really want to say something to her, say it to me and then I'll tell her. I, I didn't even say anything bad. I know. But she doesn't like to hear from you. You creep her out. Possibly because you posted private info about her on your site. Literally, the whole thing was all chillax, like, hey, what's up? What? I understand that, but when someone hates you, you don't write to them saying, hey, what's up? And trying to do so will not make her like you. Then what on earth will? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. She will hate you until the day she dies, and nothing you do or say will ever change that. Every time you try, she just hates you all that much more for it. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Seriously, listen very closely. She hates you so much. She wants to kill you in a painful manner. Okay? I am aware of this. And the only thing that will change it is if you back the fuck off. I don't think you realize that people can change their minds about such things. As a Canadian, it makes me want to slam your fingers in the trunk of a car every time I hear you say a boot. Why? Canadians don't even say about. And I realize that. But you have done so much to antagonize yourself, any further attempts to make her change her mind will only further drive her away. Do you understand that? Okay, but if I don't make attempts, she probably won't drive back towards me, so... So you should leave her alone. Would you rather have her hate you even more than she does now? Come on, Nick, use your head. But if I leave her alone, she won't love me. I know you've got one in there. I know you've got one in there. If you continue to contact her, she won't love you. See? Now you're just confusing things. That's the way it is. No matter what you do, she will not love you. Sure she will. Oh my god. What makes you believe that? What sane, rational part of your brain could ever make you think that? Um, because we're soulmates? Pretty sure I explained this multiple times before. Yes. But you're not soulmates. You can't be soulmates if one soul hates the other soul. And if the other soul harasses the other to the point where that soul wants to kill the other. Yeah, but somehow she's going to stop hating me and start loving me. So yeah, soulmates. P.S. I'm not harassing her. You know, I think you might be a troll. Why would I be trolling the same person for five years? You see, five years, she still fucking hates you. Yeah, because she's stubborn. Also, what on earth do you have to offer her? You're ugly as sin, flabby, unintelligent, and delusional. Safety, wisdom, love, analingus, pretty much everything, really. And, you know, love goes beyond superficial shit like appearance and personality traits. Haha, <laughs> he said the word, he said shit. Haha, <laughs> uh... I hate myself. You're the biggest threat in her life. Her parents have gone to the police and are concerned for her safety. If you go near her, they, being the fiercely protective people they are, will never let you marry. What wisdom? You're extremely stupid. No comment, because this isn't love, it's obsession. Four, she's not into it. One, when Anna loves me, she'll call that off. Two, intelligence and wisdom aren't the same thing. And three, it's love, damn it! Or maybe she will be in the future, son. If you ever call me son again, I'll rip your tongue out. What? I call everyone son, and dog, and dude, and nudist, and countless other pronouns. And they'll never call it off because they know what's best for her. Obviously, they don't if they don't want me to marry her. I am what's best for her. But you don't even know how to look after yourself, Nick. Anna is an extremely difficult person. I don't think for one minute that you can handle it. I can. I know Anna better than I know myself. I know how to handle her problems and stuff. Like what? Explain. Demonstrate. What? You expect me to come up with an example off the top of my head? <sighs> yes, since you know so much about her. You are, after all, the Anna Guru. 
I don't know, it depends on whatever her problem is at the time. P.S. Using this moniker now, uh, you're her biggest problem. Only because she's making me into a problem. You both are. I'm only trying to help her and she's being all, well, bitchy. Admittedly, she's not handling it very well, but what could you expect? <laughs> Understatement. Um, I would expect her to at least give me a chance to see how things work out. I don't see how that's so much to ask. Good luck to you on that. Meh. But it kinda is too much to ask. I don't need luck. It'll happen anyway. You've scared her away. How do you figure? She's told me so. What? No, no. I meant back before she started doing this. Like, when we were friends. Well, you started getting really creepy. And you decided that you were in love with her. This, is under this understandably scared her off. Um, because I am in love with her. Be right back. What was I supposed to do? Just not tell her? Uh, four minutes later. Uh, they said be right back, but four minutes later. No, it's fine that you've told her. <clears throat> but after that, you should have respected her boundary. That's what love is about. Respect. How did I not respect her? You continue to try to pressure her into a relationship and write disturbing fanfics about her poop. Oh, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, he yeah he he made he made some short stories. We'll we'll read one short story, okay? Let's get into it. There's nothing wrong with writing fanfics. She herself does it all the time, and I didn't even put pressure on her either. Yes, but not about people she knows, and not in a creepy sexual manner. See, that's the main thing. All I did was ask if she wanted to go out with me. You're creepy as fuck. No, I'm not. And that's the other thing. You have no idea how creepy you are. There's nothing creepy about me, not in the least. It's unanimous that you are really, really creepy. So Anna's friends make up the entire vote then. <laughs> People who actually know me know I'm not creepy. Dude, Jessica the doormat can't stand you. Jessa likes everyone. She's just that nice. She used to like me. I'm not sure what the hell happened with her. Oh, I know. She only ever talked about you because she pitied you. She told me. She was friends with me before I even told her about Anna. Yes, and she pitied you even then. She tends to be friends with people she pities. What the fuck would she have pitied me for before I told her about Anna? I'm not sure if Anna and I are included in this spectrum. And I read your own life story. And it's all about your stupid fucking websites. Dude, I know Jessa, and she didn't just pity me. I used to be one of the closest friends until Anna had to go and ruin it. You seem to hold a lot of resentment towards Anna. Uh, what does my biography have to do with anything? To be honest, it doesn't even seem like you like her. Well, of course. She made the past two years of my life hell. And it says that you grew up in an abusive home, shitty family situation, no friends. Actually, no, even before she started hating me. Yeah, your point being, she pitied you. She didn't know that stuff either. And dude, if you don't want Anna to keep ruining your life, leave her the fuck alone. It's that simple. If I left her alone, it wouldn't fix my life. The only thing that can fix it is if she loves me. You're very stupid. Irrelevant. No, it's very irrelevant. It's very relevant. No, it's a moot point. Because... You still believe that she will someday love you. You are just that stupid. Because she will! It has nothing to do with intelligence or stupidity. It's the truth. Ugh. I give up. So yeah, I guess that means she's not gonna text me back quite yet. Also, edit. Also, I was semi-joking about the Inalingus. Semi. Phew. Jesus Christ, we made it. Ugh. We got through the blog. This dude's fucked beyond oblivion. All right, so now that we've talked about, uh, uh, I'm sorry, not about. Now that we've talked about that, you didn't think it'd get any more obsessive, right? Well, guess again, because it does. You're wrong. Here, here's a quote from Nick um, that are the rules for him to have a successful life. Marry Anna, have kids with her, and be literally the greatest husband ever. Never get into arguments with her. Kind of failed that part. Never lie to her or hide things from her. That part actually screwed me over. Go figure. Protect her from any dangers that may arise. Always be romantic and surprise her with gifts and thoughtful acts. Do all the housework. Take care of her and the kids. Cheer her up when she's sad. 
cook her meals and just make her happy in general and always put her before myself. Never graduate high school. Failed. Yes, I failed at failing school. That's just how much I fail. Why? Why would you want to not ever graduate high school? Never have a job. Nope, that definition of a job is having a boss, having to travel away from home, and having to contract or do other paperwork. I'll probably make money via Google ads or my cartoons or something. I don't know. I'll just ask Anna what she wants once she's talking to me again. So let's get into one of these uh, short stories that he wrote about Anna. Forward. The following takes place in an al alternate reality in which Anna and Nick have already gotten married and needless to say are madly in love with each other. They have also stumbled upon a beautiful meadow filled with colorful flowers and seemingly outnumber the grass. The meadow has all the essentials, a neighboring forest consistent, consisting of every plant known to man thus producing food. Basically, he is living in the Garden of Eden with Anna. <laughs> oh my god. A river endlessly flowing with clean water in a unique climate, which is always at just the right temperature. In the meadow, it is impossible to be too hot or too cold. The precipitation does not exist. The plants in the forest thrive without water. The meadow is unknown to both man and animal. It has never been discovered by anyone and will never be discovered again. Nick and Anna have decided to spend their days there alone, forsaking all material possessions. Even their clothing has been discarded, as they are needing neither for warmth nor for modesty, as there is no one around to hide their genitals from. As such, Anna and Nick reside in the meadow completely naked, save for the crown of flowers he crafted for her. Our, our story begins as Nick awoke one morning lying in the flowers beside his sleeping wife. His arms were wrapped around her, and hers around his. Nick lovingly gazed at the beautiful meadow princess. She lay on her side, face buried in his shoulder and buttocks placed outward as if she were in a semi-fetal position. It wasn't long before Anna too woke from her sleep. While still asleep, she stretched her arms and legs and to her horror passed gas very loudly. Realizing what she had done, she quickly became alert and at the same time, embarrassed. Her face turned bright red, her eyes widened, and she unknowingly held on to Nick tighter. Nick smiled and stroked her hair. It's alright. I like it when you fart. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Anna, relieved, loosened her grip on him and for no particular reason began stroking his erect penis. She slowly and sensually massaged it, which aroused them both. Okay. Do I just keep going? I guess I gotta keep going. Anna sat up, leaned forward, and put her lips on the tip of his penis. She then began sliding up and down his entire penis again very slowly. She did it very soft and rhythmically. Uh, you get it. Yep, I can't. <laughs> I don't. This is gonna. Oh my god, dude. Look, I, I'm gonna save you guys a little. Like, it, things are just gonna get worse from here. Things are just gonna get worse from here. So we're, we're gonna. We're gonna. I'm gonna exclude this. You know what it's about, all right? <laughs> we're going. Like I said, I've tried to go over every little detail that I can. So. Oh, buddy boy. That pretty much concludes the Anna saga. Um, but don't worry, don't worry. There's more sagas to go, so... And it's just gonna continually just snowball. So, let's get into it. So, while we're on the subject of his obsessions, let me introduce to you another of his online relationships, Maddie, who apparently dated him out of pity. Now, Maddie was more likely a troll, as she actually got 7-8 Chan in on all the action. When she went on to the Chans, she posted chat logs and his nudes seemingly sent the link to the thread to Nick, which wasn't particularly favorable to him. Though after a few months, he even got the balls to start posting to threads there, and of course that went about as well as you could imagine. Now Maddie, she just ended up being a troll. There really wasn't too much to say about Maddie. Uh, she pity, pity dated him and then just went and you know, exposed him, so... Uh, it was reported that she was ran off of the chans because she was also found to be kind of a weird person, but You're dealing with Nick Bates if you're if anybody's dealing with Nick Bates, you're probably weird. So there you go All right, so now we got to talk about the most vile and excruciatingly painful elephant in the room, okay? Um, or at least for those that know about Nick, uh, we got to talk about his sister. Nick has a sister and is found in a chat log between Anna and Nick. He had a... Uh, he, took, he took advantage of her sexually around 2009, 2010. You remember the legend of Anna blog that I was talking about? Yeah, about the time that he was writing these blogs. Um, 
He was doing stuff to his eight-year-old sister. That's the nicest way that it, it also... That's the nicest way that I could put that. Uh, I know it makes you want to, like, throw up. Before we get into anything further, please, this is the last warning. Things are about to skyrocket. Well, things are about to go straight. It's going to skyrocket the snowball all the way to hell, okay? <laughs> this is about to get bad. So click the like button. Get the fuck out of here if you uh, don't want to hear this. Also, I'm not going to be showing any footage of uh, his sister. He does have videos of her up on one of his channels. I can't remember which one it is. I'm not going to link it. I'm not going to show anything about it. Um, because she's already had to relive this nightmare through the court case. She had to get up and uh, testify. And, you know, all of it, it, it it's, it's wounds that had to have been opened back up. So, uh, just for the sake of her, I'm not going to have the editor put any footage of her, any photos of her. Because uh, she, it, this is long gone. Like, she needs to just move on with her life, alright? So... Anyways, warning there, get out of here, hit subscribe, all that stuff. Now let's get into it. Anyways, he took advantage of his, uh, you know, eight-year-old sister on 2009-2010. Uh, she was around five to seven years old, uh, which makes a ton of sense due to the fact, you know, that we got context now. He, he's had several videos of her up on his channels, uh, from birthday videos to just hanging out with her. Really, it just brings a lot of more context to those videos. It... it yeah. Let's take a quick look at the chat log here. Like I said, this is about to get really fucking bad. But this is a chat log between Anna and Nick. So, uh... Now, the chat log kind of starts off uh, without any kind of context. So, let's get into it here. Um, Anna. Who was it? Uh, um, uh... Oh my god, come on, I'm getting excited. Yeah, right now. But once I tell you, tell you, you'll think I'm a pedo. I mean, I kind of am... But still, it was or wasn't it? Um, maybe? Are you being serious? Yeah, she kind of coerced me. What the fuck does that mean? Well, like, we always talked about what me and Joe were going to do sexually, and then eventually, she wanted to do sexual things, and yeah. One day, she was like, well, I'ma suck your penis. Ugh. Wait, how old was she? Uh, well, she's nine now, so I don't know. Eight, maybe? Yeah, she's pretty fucked up to be a rapist at eight. Ah ha 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 ha. Yeah, not my best moment. Damn, you're fucked up. She started it 30, 30 minutes later. Well, um, doesn't know how to wipe, so when I went to lick her butt, there were feces everywhere, so I just licked the cheeks instead. Uh, Nick blanks out for some reason. I don't know why it's blank. What? What? You licked your eight-year-old half-sister's shitty butthole? No, just the cheeks. What the actual fuck? I couldn't lick the hole because it was shitty. Which sucks because I want to lick an anus, damn it. Yeah, but your eight-year-old half-sisters? Well, I didn't have anyone else. Dear God. So, yeah. Oh, that's right. I've had my anus sucked, too. Licked? I can't read that. Licked? I've had my anus licked, too. It actually feels pretty good, but I still prefer to do the licking myself. Who the fuck did that? Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> oh, man. Now, th these chat logs, they eventually get, like, uh, these now these chat logs they eventually get leaked so he he had a response to all of this he, he had a response to all of it so now we haven't went into his response uh, there's reasons for that and all of these allegations and and probably won't as the way that his he proves his innocent is well it's fucking vile he basically posted a paste bin link to his Twitter and when viewed it was a video of him taking shit out of a toilet and well pleasuring himself uh, <laughs> well, at least trying to, because, uh, uh he, you know, I, I was held down, like, uh, I was held down and forced to watch the video, like, in Clockwork Orange, um, he couldn't get himself hard, he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't get an erection, also, he has a tiny penis. Now, how that proves his innocence to whatever the fuck, uh, he did to his sister is beyond me, but, here, here we are. <laughs> oh my god. Finally made it. We finally got to the happy ending that I mentioned in the beginning of this video, so let's 
Let's delve into that. The day of his fall was on uh, April 30th, 2015. Uh, police knocked on his door. They arrested him due to uh, some of the chat logs being leaked. Uh, they were given a court date of January 19th of 2016, in which the Kiwi Farms uh, user Saul Goodman uh, went and covered the court proceedings in pretty good depth. Uh, which <laughs> I kind of find funny, but he called he called this uh, Operation Shit Eater. Uh, we'll take a moment to read his recap, uh, you know, of the happy ending. Operation Shit Eater, Part 1. The Phantom Court Date. I'm writing this update from the parking lot outside the Millersville Magisterial District Court, which, like a lot of the magistrate, first level, courts in the rural U.S. is not all that imposing. This one is in a double-wide trailer surrounded by a beautiful dandelion shrewn, strewn meadow and, somewhat incongruously, a couple rusting truck trailers. I've been in the business long enough to know that at places like this, you should really call ahead, but in my defense, my decision to undertake this mission was only made last night. He traveled a long while to uh, actually do this. Like he traveled a, a little bit. So big up, big ups to Saul Goodman. Shout out to S Saul Goodman. All right. The upshot is that there was no hearing. They put that date in as a placeholder while they try to find someone in this bovine besotted wonderland to defend Sick Nick. This is not because no one in the public defender's office wants the job. It's just how things often work in places like this. Slowly. The clerk will notify me when the actual date is set. So at the end of the day, Nick is still in jail, nothing really happened, and I lost multiple hours of sleep to drive through miles upon miles of manure-scented highway, although if I am to be fair to the cows, it might merely have been the stench wafting, wafting across, wafting across the Lancaster County Jail. Stay tuned for part two. And here's part two. I called ahead and confirmed that the hearing is going ahead as scheduled, this time coming from at Miss Goodman's place. The drive took me through miles of nothing but cornfields and cow pastures. Despite some heavy rain, I got there before Nick. So I will have pictures of both him and the party van, TM, trademark, when it arrives. Stay tuned. Part 2A. Shit begins to go down. Simply, th it, this was simply just some photos of him getting escorted. So uh, editor put those photos in. Part 2B. Shit goes to trial. No pun intended. Since there seems to be some confusion, my recap will begin with some spurging about how a preliminary hearing works in Pennsylvania uh, and other similar states. A preliminary hearing is not a trial. It is merely a check balance to make sure that the prosecution can't bring unfounded charges. The standard for a preliminary hearing is that, in order to go to a formal arraignment at the main county courthouse, the prosecution must show under... Pennsylvania law that there is a prima facie case that one, an offense has been committed and two, the defendant has committed it. A prima facie case, or on its face in Latin, means that the, the state can show the court sufficient evidence that if this evidence is accepted as true, i.e. viewed on its face, the court can conclude that a crime has been committed and the defendant probably committed it. This is not about reasonable, about reasonable doubt or gathering evidence that happens during the discovery phase of the trial, or arguing the merits of the case. It is, once again, merely a check on the prosecution's power to charge people incorrectly slash unfairly. They have to show that they have some evidence that, if it is accepted as true, would sustain their charges. Obviously, if the prosecution cannot produce such evidence, it would be inappropriate for the judge to send the case to trial. I mention this background because it is useful in understanding what happened today. As you read this, keep in mind that while the defense has a right to call witnesses and cross-examine the state's witness, it can only do so to negate the state's case, i.e. show that even if you accept the state's evidence is true, it doesn't sufficiently show the defendant committed the crime. Again, this is not a time for the defense to do discovery or question the credibility of the witness for the purpose of preliminary hearing. Their testimony is accepted as true. Accordingly, the fact that the hearing went the way it did tells us a lot about the defense strategy. By making the victim testify and pushing her as hard as they can, more on this below, they're sending a message that they're going to go after this innocent 12-year-old girl if the case doesn't plead out. Editor's note, I realize that her name has been published on other websites, and in order to protect her privacy, I suggest that we stop using her first name and refer to her as the victim, or AO. Because seriously guys, 
who would want this shit popping up in a Google search for their name for the rest of their lives? It's not an uncommon strategy, and sadly, it's quite often an effective one. My last update left off with sitting next to stepdad aunt and B mum with or yeah B mum with stepdad going off to pick up the victim from her friend's house because she had suddenly been called to testify. The three adults do, as several posters have surmised, seem like the stereotypical country folk. The father, a balding, weathered man in clothes that suggested a physically strenuous occupation, seems to be genuinely overwhelmed. He, comment he commented to me that, I've never been to a place like this before. I assumed he meant to a courthouse for a criminal proceeding. I replied that I hadn't either. This was indeed the first time I'd been to a magistrate's court in an actual trailer, although I have been, se been to several that were simply unimposing. B Mum and Ant were genuinely kind and gentle people, not the horrible intolerant rednecks that everyone seems to think. B Mum even gave me the pen and paper that I used to take notes at the hearing after I was a typical Spurg and forgot mine in the car. And this was after she knew I was a blogger slash online reporter, and heavens knows the internet has not been kind to her son. That said, she and the aunt were simply folk, and aunt shares the Stoutzenberger family teeth, but B Mom seems in surprisingly good shape for her age, and do genuinely seem to have convinced himself that Nick is innocent. The aunt remarked how all the news reports have been filed with or filled with inaccuracies. Editor's note, rates optimistic. <sighs> B-Mum concurred and said that she had turned everything off for a few weeks and wanted to hear more positive stories on the news. Given that the father, mother, and victim are still living together, I can only imagine with this state of affairs what it's doing to the family dynamic. The hearing itself was relatively short with only two witnesses called. The second was the detective. Uh, but all she was there to do is the usual, yep, I arrested him, and on these charges, she wasn't cross-examined. The victim's testimony, uh, her sister, however, was unnerving, even for someone like me who spent a significant amount of time working in courtrooms. Also, as I remarked about the detective earlier, almost everyone there looked as if they came straight from central casting. The prosecutor was a, was a pretty and eager young brunette, seemingly fresh out of law school, Public Defender was a heavyset, gray-haired gentleman who absolutely oozed with good old boy charm. And as you can see from the perp walk, Constable was a total badass. My oh my did he rock those shades. Victim's direct examination was relatively straightforward. She told everyone who she was, who Nick was, what had happened. Out of respect for her, I won't go into the details. Thank you, Saul. You are an OG. But I will say both that... These things she described were brutal and disgusting to a degree far beyond what was previously been reported. And that her testimony was both assured and other utterly convincing, which made having to listen to it all the more horrible. However, even in the middle of her direct, the Sleazy Defense Council, or SDC, started in with what I consider to be inappropriate gamesmanship. He interrupted and asked the victim directly to speak up. It was a small room, I was at the back of it, and I heard her just fine. I realize better than most that every defendant is entitled to a zealous and competent defense. I think that's a good thing, a wonderful thing even, about our society. And sometimes a zealous defense means callous, working to discredit an innocent 12-year-old girl, but it does not mean actively doing things that, at least from my perspective, so serve no purpose other than intimidating her. The prosecutor, while generally excellent, which is not surprising these days, you have to have a superb credentials to get any prosecutor's job straight out of law school, unfortunately played into this a little bit, in my opinion, by asking questions that weren't necessary to make her prima facie case. So, uh, i.e., or e.g., example, so when you say you sucked it, what do you mean by that? But it, it was on cross-examination that uh, the sleazy defense counsel got significantly out of line. He began making her repeat, confirm pretty much everything she was on direct for specifics on dates, time, logistical details, including such things as exactly how Nick pulled the victim's shirt up. The prosecutor objected, and her objections were sustained. On three different occasions, the sleazy district court's questions constituted a fishing expedition in which he was trying to discredit the victim and try to ca try the case on the merits rather than contest the Commonwealth's prima facie case that a crime had occurred and that Nick had committed it. Obviously, after the victim's testimony, the judge found that the Commonwealth had met its prima facie burden and sent the case over to Lancaster County Court of Common Pleas for a formal arraignment trial. 
Uh, after the hearing, the detective, the prosecutor, the bailiff, and the constable were chatting. The, the detective called me over and asked about my accent. After chatting f for a bit, I asked if I could ask her a question in return. So, were you the one who got the video? Uh, she replied that she was, that she was the one to get the video, but that Nick didn't actually attach it to the email, but rather threatened her wording to send it to her. She remarked that she had found it on... Oh, the Encyclopedia Dramatica in the course of her research and while smiling ever so slightly informed me that several of her colleagues had seen it. She asked where she could read more so I gave her the web address. If you're reading this detective, allow me to second everybody else here in commending you for your work. You put in a ton of effort and waded through a ton of muck and filth both literally and figuratively to help make the world a better and safer place. Anyway, the long and short of it is that A, Sick Nick is going to be in prison for a long time at the end of this. B, a bunch of people in Lancaster County now know or shortly will know about Kiwi Farms. And C, the victim is tough as nails after dealing with what must be an utterly insane home life, even apart from this case. She seems remarkably well adjusted. It's a real tragedy that she had to go through this. I'll answer more questions later, but for now it's time to distract myself with CGI dinosaurs. It's been a sin sincerely exhausting day. Good night, everybody. We got our happy ending. He was uh, charged, you know, with the things that he did to his sister up to 16 and a half to a 40 year state prison term. So he's gonna be living the rest of his life uh, in jail. So there we have it, people. Uh, I, myself, have spent countless hours in research and dealing with all of this information. Uh, I've deemed this man as probably the most degenerate, insane, and disgusting person. One, on the internet, and two, that I will probably ever be covering on my channel. Uh, it is pretty fucking gross. I am glad for once that one of my stories, uh, or one of my documentaries, that I'm glad that there was a happy ending, that he was found out. I'm very glad that the victim got, uh, you know, justice. Justice has for once been served. Um, in the case of, say, Carissa Tabona, uh, justice needs to be served for her. I made a documentary about her. She desperately, desperately needs, uh, some kind of justice, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know, I've made other documentaries. Go check those out. Uh, I appreciate, if you watched, if you were able to dig through the shit, if you're able to get through this, this shit, literally and figuratively, uh, I appreciate you. Thank you. Like I said, go check out some of my other uh, documentaries. Maybe hit subscribe. If you like Mega Man, I do gaming videos and I stream on the regular. So you know, go check the go check that out if you want. Uh, but yeah, that's probably gonna do it for this. This was a Nick Bates documentary. Um, vile, fucking, he's the most vile person. Uh, but yeah, uh, shit. We didn't. I didn't even. I've been. I've been recording this for like. Shit, three hours? I think it's been about three hours, right? That I've been sifting through all this, getting everything ready, and finally, like, sitting down and recording. Uh, I didn't even get to touch his Twitter. If you want to go take a look at his Twitter, I'm just going to put that in the description. There's just so much. 18,000 tweets. There's 18,000 tweets. If you guys want to see, like, a, I don't know, a video where I go through each and every tweet, uh, most of the things that he's replying to uh, have been deleted, so... Maybe I can find them on the web archive. I don't know, but that's going to do it for this. I appreciate you for watching. Don't forget, hit that like, subscribe, if you enjoy the content. I'll see you in the next episode of Whatever I'm Doing with I Put Your uh, <laughs> Nick on My Baits. Fuck. I hate that outro. I hate it. Have a good day.